Good morning, good evening, good whatever time you're watching this at. Welcome to yet another Pipe Dream speed run. This week, I'm going to teach you how to make a Webflow website connect to an Airtable table. Webflow websites, a lot of W's to go through. I'm pretty excited about this week's speed run because it's the first one where it actually has a UI element to it. Instead of starting with a brand new workflow like we typically do, instead we're going to start with a Webflow website. So here is my account. I'm going to create a brand new website from scratch, and it gives us a prompt for some templates to go through. I'm just going to pick this business starter one. You can click any one you prefer. We'll start here, and we'll call it Pierce's site. Create this website. So now we're in the Webflow website editor, and we can see that there's already a contact page made for us. We'll just have to navigate to it under the pages section. So currently we're under home. Let's navigate to contact. And here we can see that there's a contact form already built. Now we just need to learn how to wire it up to our workflow. So heading on back to our pipe dream account, I've already started with a brand new workflow and the connection between Webflow and our workflow is going to be an HTTP request. That's how forms work. So we're going to create a brand new HTTP trigger, save that. And now we're given a URL to use. Perfect. So I'm going to copy this URL, I'm going to go back to Webflow, and I'm going to edit this form. So I'm going to click this wrapper. This opens up a brand new kind of menu over here on the left-hand side. We can drill down a little bit further, and here is the actual form itself. Now, on the right-hand side, you'll see all kinds of styling-related properties. The one we care about is actually underneath this settings, element settings area. And here we can see the action. An action is the URL that is going to be requested when this form is submitted. And that URL, we, we already know, we've already created. We're just gonna copy it here. Now that our workflow URL is copied, we can publish our site and test to see if this contact form is sending events to our workflow. So I just published it. And now we can preview it with this icon over here. Here's the public contact page, we'll say my name, my email, hi, saying hi. And look at that. We received the response, the default response from Pipe Dream right here in our contact form. So if we go back to Pipe Dream, we can see there's a brand new event right in our workflow and we can look at the data that it received Sure enough, there's all the data we just imported into the contact form. And we'll go ahead and we'll add the Airflow integration. So I'm gonna search for Airflow, Airtable integration, Airtable. We're gonna create multiple records. Now we can click on our account, connect our Airtable account. And I've already made a contact space, which looks a little bit like this. There's the name, message, email, and an optional status field. In this particular table, I'm going to click the table and to wire up the table to this particular workflow. And then you'll see here, there's a note about how to structure the data. So we need to make a very specific JSON object, make sure that it's an array, which means these two symbols here. And then we're going to need to make an object that represents one row in the spreadsheet or the base. And I'm going to say the name column. And how do we find the name column? We select the path here that creates a link between the form data point that's called name and this particular row. And we can do the same thing for the other records as well. So we're gonna go ahead and make a new, a new entry called email. And we're going to also wrap it in quotes to make sure that it's turned into a JSON object. Select the path. And then last but not least, the message, right? So the message in double quotes and make sure to select the path to inject it right in there. And then the last option here is to typecast, which is basically a fancy way of saying, let Airtable predict what kind of data types these are. It should predict them as strings. So I'm just gonna turn it on and we can finally test. Whoa, that was that. That was pretty easy. We just got a green success res response. And if we head on over to our Airtable, sure enough, 
name, message, and email are all populated in our brand new contacts database. Thank you, Luke Hillier, for this week's speedrun suggestion. We're always looking for new speedruns to build. So if you have an idea, just leave it in the comment section below. Have a great day.